Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is your host, famous TikTok influencer Frank Jew, here again today to talk about some systems design. Today we'll be talking about two-phase commit, which I personally use a lot in my day-to-day -day life, especially with the lovely ladies out there. In the first phase of the commit, I tend to tell them that uh, I am ready to commit to them. And in the second phase, I break that vow and go back to being a Sigma male. So let's get into the content of this video and uh, yeah, get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, today we would be talking about two-phase commit. So what exactly does that word mean, or that term rather? Well, basically, uh, last episode we introduced the concept of partitioning our database, which is something that we do when our data set becomes too big to be stored on one individual node. And so what that means is that basically now we often find ourselves having to write to multiple physical computers at one time for a variety of reasons. The first just being cross partition writes, right? Sometimes you make a write and it needs to go to multiple different places. And the second is global secondary indexes where instead of just having a local secondary index where we basically index all of our data per node, we actually take all of the aggregate data across partitions and we split up that global index such that a piece of the index is on every single node. Feel free to go back to the last video if you need a refresher on that. So again, why do we need it? Distributed transactions. We need atomicity here because when we want to write to multiple places, let's say this is node one and this is node two and those guys represent different partitions. If this guy goes through, but this write fails, we're in trouble. Our database is now going to be in an inconsistent state and we are going to probably have some incorrect reads, which generally speaking, we don't necessarily want. Eventual consistency is okay because we know it will resolve itself, but incorrect reads will not. Those are going to be persisted forever. So how does two-phase commit actually work? Well, first thing I'm gonna do is show off the phase where it doesn't work. So let's say we have one node right here. This is gonna be our coordinator node. And even though I'm calling it a node, what this might end up being is just an application server. Right, like we have a client who wants to perform a write and the client is reaching out to our application server and the application server is sending two different writes to our two database partitions. So let's say we're gonna call this guy a coordinator node. That's going to be a new vocabulary term. And the first thing that coordinator node is going to do is say, all right, I'm trying to start out a two phase commit write because I want to write to two different partitions. So the first thing it does is right over here. It's going to say, I'm gonna reach out to node number one and say, I'm sending you message one. Are you ready for it? Node number one is going to look at itself and say, hmm, can I actually go ahead and commit this thing? I'm gonna run a local transaction. Here's my write ahead log. Can I write it down? Is it gonna cause an error? And if not, everything is good. It's going to grab the locks for that row so that nothing else can modify it. And it's going to respond back to our application server with an okay. And so in the meantime, from when this guy responds okay until it hears back from the coordinator node, it's just waiting and the locks are still grabbed. Now the coordinator node, or probably at the same time in parallel, is going to reach out to node number two over here with another message saying, hey, are you ready to possibly commit message two? And so node two is going to look locally. It's gonna see um, this message two and it might say, hmm, you know what? I'm actually not sure I can commit this. Uh, either it's gonna conflict with some other right that I have or perhaps I don't have enough space for it. And then it might respond back to the coordinator node saying, no, I'm not good with this. So what the coordinator node has to do is actually go and write back to node one and say abort. And it's only then that node one can unlock. So now I'm gonna erase some things because that is how this would work in the case where we can't go through with a two-phase commit, right? So I'm gonna erase this guy here. I'm gonna erase the fact that we've grabbed some locks. I'm gonna erase the no message. So let's say now that we actually can go through with a two-phase commit. So again, we start with ready message one. We start with ready message two. And let's say this guy gives the okay. Now what the coordinator node is going to do is the following. In its own local commit log, it's going to say, hey, we have a transaction that I know I want to be able to commit with message one and message two. And from now on, if I happen to go down, you know, let's say this guy crashes, it can read back from the commit log to know that we can recommit this thing. So even if our coordinator node goes down, keep in mind that these two are now both waiting to hear back from the coordinator node. And while they're waiting, they've maintained grabbing the locks for all of the rows that are going to be part of this commit. Then let's say the coordinator node is ready to finally send a commit and now it's going to do the following. Commit. And it's going to do the same thing here to node number two. Commit. 
And then now node one and node two can go ahead and commit that local transaction. So, you know, they're gonna do that, they're gonna put it in their write ahead log, blah, 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 it's committed, blah, blah, blah. And now they can unlock their local locks, you know, erase these guys right here. And then once they do that, they can respond back to the coordinator node saying, okay, we're done. And that is all it is right there, guys. We just have one coordinator node and all the coordinator node is doing is ensuring that both of these two things either go through or both of the transactions do not go through. It's important that they are atomic. So this is not too complicated of a process, but it does have some caveats and some complications that arise with it. So what are some problems that we encounter when we see two-phase commit? Well, for starters, there are a lot of points of failure. So the first thing is this, we have a single coordinator node. And if this guy goes down, nothing is getting committed. And if this guy goes down after the commit point, where the commit point is the first time these guys respond to OK, now they're waiting and they have all of these locks grabbed. And while these locks are grabbed, no other transactions can go through on those same rows. So obviously that is going to be a problem, that no transactions can receive and that locks are being held. And again, those rows are basically untouchable during that period of time. What if one of these receivers goes down? So our coordinator node is going to be back up right here. Oops, accidentally deleted the commit log. Let me draw that guy back. But basically, let's say this guy right here, geez, I gotta get my marker back. This guy right here is going to go down. If our node one goes down, the issue there is that now the transaction can't actually commit because we can't get an okay from both of those nodes after that commit point. When the first node said, hey, I'm good to commit this, but now it went down for some reason. So what's gonna happen then is our coordinator node is just gonna have to repeatedly over and over and over again, send messages until node one forever until it actually responds and completes the commit. So obviously this is a problem too. We have very little fault tolerance here. We've basically said, if we're past the commit point, we need to get this thing done no matter what it takes. We're gonna try it forever basically until we can get it done. So what's actually the conclusion of two-phase commit? Well, basically for distributed transactions, which are something that is a necessity for things like cross-partition rights or global secondary indexes, they're very dangerous because we run the risk of having a failure. And when we have a failure, our system is basically unable to proceed. Thus, things like cross-partition rights and global secondary indexes in distributed systems are generally things that we want to avoid when possible. There are definitely other ways of being smarter about how you shard your data or possibly even improving your data locality with something like a NoSQL or like a document store database that are going to allow us to generally be able to avoid these types of cross-partition rights. So this is something to definitely keep in mind as you think about designing your own systems. These types of rights are very dangerous and while two-phase commit can be improved, and we'll talk about how you can do that when we cover things like distributed consensus and um, things along those lines, it's definitely something that generally you want to avoid. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.